news, yeah. <clears throat> All right, what's up everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. So this dude, Taylor Hansen, was on the TimCast IRL podcast on January 10th, and he had like the worst, most misinformed, straight up wrong take about vaping that I have ever seen in my 14 years in this industry. Like literally everything that came out of his mouth was completely incorrect on, on like a comedic level. Because of the vitamin E acetate, wow. they were making carts at home and then selling it to children and people were just popping up with popcorn long out of stuff. Vaping metal particles over and, and, and over again. And here's the thing, I don't even really want to talk about what he said on the TimCast IRL podcast. I kind of want to pick apart the Twitter thread he doubled down on on Twitter after the podcast happens where you can kind of imagine almost everything he said was incorrect or a straw man or simplified so far down it's lost all meaning. Let's start. Vaping is not a safe alternative to smoking cigarettes. Damn, first sentence. It's actually far too many people to list that disagree with that statement, but let's start with a few heavy hitters. U.S. National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine. While e-cigarettes are not without health risks, they are likely to be far, far less harmful than combustible tobacco cigarettes. Public Health England. Our review reinforces the finding that vaping is a fraction of the risk of smoking, at least 95% less harmful of negligible risk to bind standards, yet over half of smokers either falsely believe that vaping is as harmful as smoking or just don't know. People think it's as harmful as smoking because of people like Taylor Hansen. Then how about Cancer Research UK? Evidence so far indicates that e-cigarettes are far less harmful than tobacco and may help smokers cut down or stop smoking. We do not believe there is justification for any indoor bans on e-cigarettes, either on the basis of potential harm to bystanders from secondhand vapor or that they renormalize smoking tobacco. See, the UK has socialized health care, so it's in the best fiscal interests of the United Kingdom to recommend to their citizens vaping over smoking. In fact, all of their messaging says that. They put vape shops in hospitals, for God's sake, so patients and guests cannot smoke cigarettes while they're on the hospital grounds. No one is saying safe, but they are undeniably a safer alternative to smoking cigarettes. Taylor Hansen. The vaping market has successfully targeted children and made smoking cool again. If they did try to make youth smoking cool again, they did a piss poor job of it because according to the CDC's National Youth Tobacco Survey, which is the only data we have on youth smoking, youth smoking levels are currently at the lowest they have ever been in the history of America. That data was from 2019, but over 2020 and 2021 and 2022, smoking continued to drop. Elementary and middle schoolers are being hooked on this at a rate that is unprecedented. Ah, yes, the old youth vaping epidemic concocted by FDA and CDC and just thrown out there, epidemic, 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 and just yum, 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 just eaten up by Taylor Hansen, never questioning it. Government said there's an epidemic. There must be an epidemic. I'm Taylor Hansen. I'm not going to deny that any youth vape I'm just denying that they're vaping in the numbers that we're being told they're vaping in. Youth are choosing the less harmful option. Nobody wants to talk about that. Behold, the youth vaping epidemic, according to the CDC's National Youth Tobacco Survey, peaking in 2019 at about 5.7%, then dropping the next year, then dropping the next year to 3% in 2021. In 1995, when I was in high school, daily youth smoking was over 20%. So unprecedented. Juul is owned by the same company that owns Marlboro and Elf Bar is manufactured in China. Half correct, Juul isn't owned by the same company that owns Marlboro. Altria bought a 35% stake in the company of Juul. So Juul is 35% owned by the company that makes Marlboro. Couldn't even get that one thing right. That's like so easy to Google. Elf Bar is manufactured in China. So is the computer that you're using, the phone that you're using. Taylor Hansen only buys American manufactured smartphones. If you think constantly inhaling vapor with artificial flavoring, vegetable glycerin, propylene glycol, metals, and high level of nicotine salt is safe, then you have another thing coming. This is my favorite straw man that he does because he makes it up in his head that we all said that these were safe when the reality is we're just saying they're safer than cigarettes. Vaping is marketed as something to help you quit cigarettes, yet more non-smokers are picking up vaping than people who previously smoked. You would have a hard time finding an elementary slash middle school in this country where 
where vapes aren't being passed around. He kind of already covered this in the youth vaping epidemic area of his tweet. Everything he says just sounds like a hysterical mother to me. Like you could just rebrand this as a parents against vaping tweet. And it sounds exactly like something that would come out of Meredith Berkman's hysterical mouth. He's just being a propaganda tool and he kind of doesn't even realize it. Vaping lowers your T levels and makes you look stupid. Vaping is more accessible than cigarettes. Therefore they are used more. I used to smoke cigarettes. I quit by using vaping. Then I was more addicted addicted to vaping than I ever was cigarettes. Word of advice, don't do either. He hasn't provided any resources or anything to back up any of his claims, so I'm assuming he has nothing to back up that it lowers your T count, lowers your T levels, and makes you look stupid. I couldn't care less if Taylor Hansen thinks I look stupid. Vaping is more accessible is demonstrably false. Cigarettes are literally everywhere, and vaping is being banned nationwide. I think by accessible, he means accessible to him, meaning that he was vaping way more than he would go maybe outside to light up and smoke a cigarette. It means that Taylor Hansen just couldn't control himself. If he was around to vape, he's like, I'm just gonna vape, I'm just gonna vape, I'm just gonna vape, I have no self-control. Pay attention to the comments. You're gonna have these pro-vaping groups who think they're doing people a service pile on. Stop hitting your douche flutes and do something productive. Being dependent on anything is never a good thing. Cigarettes and vaping are terrible for you. His whole argument argument was kind of, here's just a bunch of regurgitated prohibitionist talking points and misinformation with my anecdotal story mixed in and no references to any studies or even articles or anything like that. It kind of felt like he was just making it up as he went along. And then he ends it with some name calling and he says being dependent on anything is a bad thing coming from a guy who I'm assuming is dependent on his car to get him around to places. Are all dependencies bad? Or are those diabetics who are dependent on insulin to, you know, not die? Is their dependency bad? Maybe all dependency isn't bad and maybe dependency on nicotine every day could be a good thing. Look, I'm not trying to drag Taylor Hansen's name through the mud or anything like that. I just want it to be known how thoroughly incorrect he was about this. And, you know, just, be careful of who you follow and, and who's influencing you. As we've seen, people can be, and oftentimes are, just confidently incorrect. This has been a Grim Green video. Let's stay smoke free and think critically every single day. <coughs> it's like 10.30 and I'm uh, just gonna smoke, so.